In talking about error handling, I've already referenced the raise error command, which as you can see, has an error in the spelling right there, raise error. So there's an older, simpler form to this, and then there's a newer, more complete form. The simple form is simply raise error, and an error value, and a text message. So if you execute this, it looks like there's an error. Down below, Management Studio is able to understand query completed with errors, and it passes up the message value and the string, unable to update customer. And this would be passed back to whichever client was working with SQL Server at the time. A more complete method of working with raise error is to call it as a function and pass to it the parameters of the message and then the severity and the state. And here's examples of the different severity, whether it comes back as just a print error kind of problem, information, a warning, or critical. Most of the time, you'll want to be using a 15 or a 16 as a warning or a critical for raise errors from T-SQL. You can also make these messages more meaningful by adding parameters to it. And here I just have customer hard-coded, but it could be actually the name of the customer or the parameter passed to the stored procedure. You can use put a variable in here. So wherever you want to place a parameter, you put a percent sign, and the parameter in sequential order is inserted into the message. This comes out as unable to update and then customer. You can also take these messages and store them in the server. And it's important to note these are stored on a server basis, not on a database basis. So here I'm going to run the SP add message stored procedure to create message 50001, unable to update, and then a parameter. We can go ahead and see this if we check sys messages. You'll see there's a message that's custom that we created. If you want to update one, you have to call add message again and use the at replace so that it knows it's being replaced. And that way you can overwrite it. The advantage of having the messages in the database is that you can localize them to different languages. You could store a 50,001 message in multiple languages, and as you localize your application, it can return back the correct language. And then in your code, you only have to call the raise message for that message ID without passing the entire message to it. So to move your messages from one machine to another, this select statement will pull out all of the messages, wrap and execute SP add message around those messages, and in its essence, build a script that could be moved from one machine to another and be executed to reapply those messages on another server. Just to do some tests. And on this machine, it's already applied. But if you move this to another machine, it would work just fine. That would be the output from the select that we just saw above this code. If you want to remove it, you can also just execute the remove. What's cool is SQL Server will also take your raise errors and write them to the log if you add the with log to your raise error. Let's go ahead and execute that and then go look at the log. So there's our error, unable to update customer. And we can see the log right here in Object Explorer. I've already got this ready for us. So here's the current log. And there it is, unable to update Explorer. And this is the same log that you could see through the operating system if you go through all the view logs inside of there as well. Just because it's interesting, let me talk about fatal errors. Most errors you'll be able to trap, and with the new try-catch you can trap more errors than ever before. But there are some errors that are fatal errors. It's not fatal in the sense that it will crash SQL Server, but SQL Server will simply end the batch right there and pass an error message right back to the front-end application. So you still have to have error trapping in your front-end application handle SQL Server errors. Because there are some errors, and if we run this code to show the severity greater than 16, here's a listing of some of the errors that SQL Server will have. Now, most of them are pretty bad errors, like possible schema corruption. For most errors, such as you're expecting to update and there's nothing there, you can trap all of those. So, error handling. 
It's come a long way since the old days of SQL 2000 and SQL 7.